you're more than welcome to stay for food afterward. Even if you didn't bring food, we'd love for you to stay because we have 256 pieces of chicken. <laughs> Thanks to uh, a thriving action team grant, um, we, we debate if we should get 100 or 125 pieces. And then our last meeting, we found out we could get 256 pieces of chicken. So, so there'll be plenty of food for, for everyone here. So uh, thank you for joining us. Hopefully you saw the table that had balloons on them with the bulletin, because if you want to know what we're doing or where we are, you're going to need this, okay? So if you get up and grab one, no shame, we'll just make sure, uh, we'll make sure everyone smiles at you when you go and get your bulletin, okay? All right, so we're going to follow Divine Service Setting 3 from Lutheran Service Book, uh, and we begin by singing our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King, which should be printed for you in your insert. Great. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of your holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, the call their name, turn to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation. And her saints will shout for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. 
O oh God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the prophet Ezekiel, the second chapter, the first five verses. And our, and our, our reading is uh, the calling of Ezekiel to be a prophet. God was sending Ezekiel in the midst of a rebellious people. Ezekiel's call was to be faithful to God and to make sure that the people, when they heard him, knew that a prophet was among them. We read. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. As he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading, which is the basis for our message today, comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the first 10 verses. And Paul tells us that he's going to continue to boast. But he's not going to boast about a great heavenly vision. He's going to boast about his weakness. Because when he is weak, by God's grace, he is strong. Paul writes, I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me to keep me from being too elated. Three times I plead with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we continue with the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. And our gospel reading this morning is almost like a Jekyll and Hyde reading. It begins with Jesus being rejected by his hometown. And Jesus is amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus sends his disciples by twos to other villages. And there they were able to heal the sick and cast out demons. We read. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, 
Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except the staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts. But to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing, Now Thank We All Our God.
Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The wind wanted to say amen with us. All right. All right. Who here wants to deal with conflict? Raise your hand nice and high if you want to deal with conflict. One, two people. Oh, well, we do have a conflict resolution specialist with us, so, yeah. All right. How about suffering? Who here wants to suffer? Me. Me. <laughs> two people again. Oh, man. All right. That's what I thought, though. Most of us, we don't like conflict, and we don't like to suffer, whether it's physical, emotional, mentally, whatever it might be. Right? I mean, we looked at, we laughed at the people who said, raise their hand to those first two questions, right? Now, now, another question for you. Since today is the 4th of July, who here would be willing to suffer and go into conflict for our country? Raise your hand nice and tall if you'd be willing to do that. Look around at all the hands that all of a sudden are up. All right, great, great, great. All right, ladies, this is just for you, okay? How many of you were willing or wanted to be willing to have pain so they could give birth to a child? Right? You don't even have to have a child to say, I would have been willing to do that. Yeah, again, more hands are up, okay? Interesting. How many of us are willing to endure conflict so that our families work together? Yeah? How about this? How many of you would be willing to risk life and limb and run back into a burning building to save your child or grandchild or another family member. Wow, that's impressive. Really, really impressive. Now, I don't want you to raise your hands for this next question, okay? I just want you to think about it. What if you were asked to deal with more conflict or had to suffer because of your faith? Would you still be willing to do that? Or should your faith, should your faith be something that requires no conflict and no suffering? And I feel like I see this often. I mean, there's plenty of things we're willing to endure at conflict and suffering for. Family, work, our country, Maybe even some of our hobbies or our friends. We're willing to endure conflict, harsh words, wrong voices, disagreements, and maybe even physically suffer for these things. But for our faith, no way. Now, if you're not sure, let me share some things that people have told me in the past. I had to leave the church pastor because there was too much conflict. It was getting too hard to go to church anymore. My faith is only supposed to make me feel better, but it was starting to make me feel worse. Pastor, I can't do that at church. There might be too much conflict. Pastor, I don't want to get involved at church because I don't want to deal with conflict and losing some of my precious time of watching TV. Now, I even mentioned the thought of, of missionaries putting their lives in the line to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and about how that terrifies most of us. But in contrast, how often do we hide our faith beliefs so that we don't cause conflict in our family settings, amongst our friends, or at work? How often do we viewed faith as something 
that serves ourselves, makes us comfortable, and is supposed to be the means to escape conflict and suffering. And it makes me wonder, if you're willing to endure hardships, conflict, willing to physically suffer through things to make those things work, whether it's family or jobs or whatever else, then wouldn't those things be your gods? I mean, you're willing to endure whatever life throws your way to make those things work. But too often our faith life our church life is one of those things that we want to escape our sufferings and avoid any type of conflict. Which is directly opposite of what Paul says in our text from 2 Corinthians today. He writes, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Those are the things we're trying to avoid today. We want to keep our heads down not make any waves. Leave people alone and they should leave us alone. And we're going to even pray in our prayers today. We just want to live peaceable and quiet lives. But the things Paul lists are the opposite. And Paul tells us those are the things we should boast about. For when we are weak, Paul says, then we are strong. But we'd rather be strong without becoming weak. And Paul begins our text by telling us that our fleshly, sinful selves would boast about the things that we'd want to boast about. He talks in the first person, and then it seems that he's really telling us about himself receiving this, this, this vision in the third heaven. He heard things uttered by angels and God that men should not hear or share. He got an amazing glimpse of the glory of heaven and God's purpose for his life. Something that we'd say is worse boasting about. But Paul wasn't boasting about that. He can't. And to make sure he can't, God sent him a thorn in the flesh. And we don't know really about much about this thorn in the flesh. We don't know what Paul had that he's talking about. But Paul does tell us that he talked to God about this thorn in the flesh. And he's just like you or me, right? Three times he said, God, please take this away from me. He pleaded with God. He begged. He prayed. He hoped God would take this thorn in the flesh away. Even though Paul had seen a vision of the third heaven, he wasn't any different than you and I. He still suffered in this world and had conflicts in his life as well. And he liked them as much as you and I do. He didn't want to suffer. He didn't want that conflict. He wanted joy, peace, a pain-free existence. He wanted the glorious life just like you and I do. But God was very clear with the Apostle Paul. God's answer was a firm and hard no. It was a firm no to Paul. And the reality is, sometimes God's answer to your prayer is a firm no as well. But what God said to Paul is what makes all the difference. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Just imagine it for a second. Paul might be writhing in pain, deeply suffering because of this thorn in the flesh. He begs God, God, please take this away. But God takes his nail-marked hand and covers the thorn in the flesh. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. This is worth suffering over. This is worth struggling with. My power is made perfect in your weakness. In this flesh, you need me. I am here. And I'll get you through this. My grace is sufficient for you. And remember, when God might say this to you, when your thorn in the flesh remains, when there's conflict and suffering in your life, and it's not as if God doesn't know what it's like or doesn't care. He cares deeply about it and cares deeply for you. 
He knows all about suffering and conflict because God became human to endure suffering and conflict. When he was human, he was rejected by his own hometown. I mean, the people who knew him best watched him grow up. He became human so he would ultimately suffer and die on the cross for you. Because when it came time to save you, Jesus embraced his cross. He walked head first into becoming a suffering servant. And each time you look at the cross, you can see how valuable you are to God. You were worth suffering for. You were worth dying for. And that grace of God found in Jesus dying and rising for you is enough. Just as God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God's not going to operate by the world's rules. He's not going to operate by your rules or my rules. He operates with his grace and mercy. And when you truly think about it, those are the things worth cherishing and having and dreaming about. But in this world, God's grace and mercy will come with conflict and maybe even suffering. But you know what? Those conflicts, those suffering moments, they can build resilience, right? They can build perseverance, character, and it makes you appreciate one another. But most importantly, it shows you how utterly dependent you are on God's grace each and every day. And it shows you how powerful God's grace is. That through the suffering of Jesus, he gives you eternal life. And the people around you who could be your thorns in the flesh, who could be frustrating you, causing you conflict, Jesus was worth, said it was worth suffering for them. And it's gonna be worth suffering in your conflicts as well because God's grace will make you strong into eternity in the name of Jesus Amen, Amen. we now continue our worship with our prayers <sighs> Heavenly Father your son endured rejection in this world you led us likewise through a hostile world that shows no honor to your church or its wisdom. Do not let us lose heart. Steal us for opposition, and let us rest confidently in what you, Lord, have said. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, your great and mighty work is to create faith by your Holy Spirit and the eternal blessings of your Son, Christ Jesus. We implore you, Make your preachers effective to proclaim your prophetic word. Remove all stubborn ears from our midst, and do not leave us without your word, but make your home among us, and restore the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, soften the hearts in every home. Turn parents and children toward each other in love and patience. Banish the spirit of impudence, stubbornness, and rebellion from all. Sanctify us in your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, protect and defend our nation from its enemies. Support our leaders and preserve them from temptation. Through the work of all civil authorities, enable us to live a quiet and peaceable life according to your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, in our weakness, we are strong for the sake of Christ whose grace is sufficient for every need. Give comfort to those whose pain is chronic, whose sustained suffering is unknown, who wrestle with difficult thorns in body or mind, or who are tempted to despair. Hear our prayers especially for Bonnie, Marcy, Byron, Larry, Helen, Jerry, Helen, Lois, Billy, John, Mary, Bridge, Christina, Marion, Joel, Paul, Cindy, and Peter. 
in weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Let us boast in Christ and his cross, by which we and our sufferings are sanctified. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, out of your abundant blessings, you have taught us your grace and mercy. Guide Trinity Lutheran School so that we can continue to teach children your abundant blessings of grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, continue to look upon us with your grace, knowing that although we don't know what is to come in the days, weeks, and months ahead, we trust that you know. Give us a measure of your protection from things seen and unseen. Keep each of us healthy and empower us to grow this church through your precious word. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the preface printed in our bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we log and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Jesus Christ in the night was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this is my blood the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always Please be seated. 
Let me tell you what's gonna happen since we're outside here. We'll wait till the bell start chiming. Stop chiming, not start. All right, so we're gonna do a continuous line. I'll have the host. Larry will have the individual cups. If you want the common cup, just tell me and I'll get it for you as I'm distributing the host, okay? So we'll start, I'll start here, Larry will be here. Obviously, you know where the cups are. You'll come this way and go around back to your seats. All right, so, so Jeff, if you wanna start on that side and have these people come this way and around, and then he'll come here, this way and around, and that way and around, okay? Are there any questions? <laughs> okay, then Ken, we, we're good to play. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Body of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Definitely need this. The body of Christ is given for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Thank you, Jesus.
This true body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. We now continue with the Nunc Dimittis. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And since we're outside, I thought it'd be fitting that we conclude our worship by singing Beautiful Savior.
Well, thank you all for joining us on this uh, outdoor service. We have a, a few announcements. So our Board of Evangelism has been planning this event for a little while. And uh, normally today would be birthday Sunday, so they're making it all one thing. So if you have a July birthday, please stand up. <laughs> Where's Patrick? Where is, where is Pat, where Patrick? There he is. All right, so we're going to sing happy birthday to all of you July birthday folks. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So happy birthday, you guys. You can have a seat. If you feel like you're being shortchanged, just say this. We got 256 pieces of chicken for you guys to celebrate your chicken. birthday, okay? Um, I know it's supposed to come here about 11 o'clock. I don't know what time it is. It's on. Um, Quarter two, so that's fine. So we got a few minutes. So I made sure Josiah set up our, uh, our uh, cornhole over here. Um, we've got some other games that still need to get set up, right, Phil and Alice and Barb? Yeah, and then we're going to have you move your chairs out of the tents so that we can make sure you can move your tables under tents so you can eat how you would like, okay? So, uh, so when the chicken gets here and we get all set up, we'll have a prayer, and then we'll have you guys come and eat. The Board of Evangelism also has a cross project. All right, they got some more made. All right, thanks, Phil. Phil did almost all of it, the next 25. And so feel free to take one home, put it in your yard, wherever you'd like, and uh, as they get more, you'll see more in church, and hopefully we can get it at a couple of places around town where that people, anyone can take it for free. Uh, let's see here. VBS is in like three weeks right mrs jonas three weeks so make sure you register for vbs um because it's gonna jesus is gonna do the impossible right yeah. all right any other announcements phil All right, we have, th so part of, as I said before, we got 256 pieces of chicken by a Thrivent Action Team grant. And so we have a bunch of Thrivent shirts that you can take home with you that are in the back of the black pickup truck over there where Barb's going right now. There are a multitude of sizes. Supposedly they're sorted by sizes. And uh, Phil is modeling the shirt for you. <laughs> And there are kid sizes too. All right. Any other announcement? Dave. All right, thanks, Dave. Golf outing, August 8th. We need you. Golfers, volunteers, sponsor, full sponsors, uh, raffle prize donations, you name it, we'll take it. Ah, yes, and if you would like a Trinity Savings Card for $20, see Mrs. Jonas. She'd be happy to sell it for you for PTL, or she wants to rename it to Parents, Teachers, and Friends of Trinity Lutheran School. All right. Well, let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God's blessings to you this week.